How's it going guys? I'm going to make a quick video here and give you some tech tips for oil changes. So this is my 2014 Daytona 675R. Uh, it doesn't actually need a oil change, but if you look on the ground, it is dripping oil. And this is because when I bought it and changed all the fluids, I didn't take the time to buy a new crush washer because I thought that was stupid and it has leaked oil from the drain plug ever since. So joke's on me. Um, it's quite annoying because you smell the oil burning on the exhaust when you're riding it. It's really bad after starting it, uh, after sitting for a while, and I'm tired of it. So I'm gonna change the oil, I'm gonna put a new crush washer on, and hopefully have no more oil leaks, because those suck. And I'm gonna film a short video doing it. All right, my first tech tip that I thought of as I was getting the fairing off is have plenty of room to work on the bike, right? I've done this before, so I know exactly what I need to do. So I have just enough room between me and the Torino here to access the panels I need to, to get to the bolts I need to, and to have a nice place to lay them out so they don't get lost. Second thing, if you're changing the oil on the bike, you need to have the bike upright. So you need to have a rear stand. You could use uh, jack stands or something else, but you want to have the bike upright, prefer not leaning on its side. Third tip, heat the bike up a little bit. Don't do what I did and go ride it around to get the oil for the bike, but I guess you could um, because then everything's way too hot. You, just, you want the oil to be above ambient temperature so it'll run out of the engine one, more quickly, and two, more thoroughly, because warm oil is thinner and it will drain easier. All right, so I'll do this as a benefit to those of you that are watching this because you want to learn how to change the oil on a, one of these Triumph Daytonas. So you need to remove at least the left side fairing. Uh, if you read the manual, uh, they'll say you should remove both, but you actually don't need to. Uh, the reason they say that is because, you know, at the, at the dealership, they don't want oil getting on any side of the fairing from the train bolt, which is down there where my finger is, and the, the uh, oil filter. Um, you don't need to do that. You just need to remove the left-hand side. Now, that sounds easy, uh, it, and it kind of is. There's uh, really just five bolts, I think. Or actually, they're over here. I'll count them. There is eight bolts and two plastic screws. Um, and so it's really not that hard, but what they don't, uh, what most people don't expect is you actually are removing the ECU from the bike. That's what these connectors are. And I'll show you where they've mounted it on the inside of the fairing. It's actually on the inside of this little splash shield here, which uh, I should have removed before I even took the fairing off, but I'll take it off and then put it back on when it's back on the bike. So now you will not be able to start the bike. So a uh, trick on these things is uh, to do the warm up portion of the oil change, you need to do that before you've taken anything off. Also, uh, fourth tip, have a beer, take your time. You don't have to rush, enjoy it. All right, so now I've got the oil drained, and while it's continuing to drain, I'll give you my next few tech tips. So the bike is hot. The oil's very hot. All this bit right here is very, very hot. Uh, so you don't want to be touching the engine or any of these pieces with your bare hands. But if you wear a glove, you know, most gloves are uh, uh, cloth. They're going to absorb any oil that gets on them, and it's going to transfer to your skin, and it's going to be very, very hot. So what I do is when I'm doing a hot engine oil change, I'll take a mechanics glove and I'll put on a nitrile glove underneath it. That way you'll get a little oil on the fingers of them because obviously you're gonna be taking it off slight with your fingers this last little bit, but that oil won't actually get through to your skin. You'll feel a little bit of the warmth, uh, but it won't burn you. All right, so if you're looking here, uh, Hopefully this is showing up on my little iPhone. There's oil all over the pan here, all over 
everything underneath the bike actually. It's even, these are the two uh, uh, fairing screws on the very bottom and they're coated in oil and even the one I pulled out of the side of the fairing had a little bit of oil on it. And so yeah, uh, considering I'm taking this to the track in just a few weeks, I'm really glad I'm doing this because that would be sitting there dripping oil one on the track and two potentially getting back and spraying on the tire just a little bit. I don't know, maybe I'm being nuts. Uh, but this is the reason why. Um, this here is the crush washer that was underneath the uh, drain bolt. It's still very hot. And I can see now why they use these because that thing is way more deformed than I thought it would be. So uh, what I did is uh, I went to the Triumph Daytona Forum and there's actually a thread about this and uh, I was able to find on Amazon a replacement for these in bulk. Uh, it's actually a Honda part but I mean it's really just an aluminum washer uh, so I'll post a link to them uh, when I can. I know YouTube has this new like 10,000 view thing so I don't know when I'll be able to do it but I will uh, get that link out in some way. I just thought of another tech tip why you need the rear stand. You need to lift the bike up a little bit because if you have a tall oil drain pan, it's not going to fit. Uh, this one's pretty low profile. You can get this at, I think I got this one at an auto zone. But uh, if I tried to use my other big one, which I can't see while I'm sitting on the floor, uh, it would not fit underneath there uh, without the rear stand. So yeah, use a rear stand. Now I'm going to try and degrease everything. Um, before I do that, on oil drain plugs, don't get too caught up on torque specs and how tight should they be, how tight shouldn't they be. Really use common sense. It's not a, a load bearing piece. It doesn't need to be exactly 25 foot pounds or whatever the manual says. Uh, stripped out drain pan bolts are extremely expensive to fix uh, in most cases. Uh, so just use common sense, you know, hand tighten it up, give it a few hits with a ratchet, that would be it. And if it's weeping a little bit, hit it again with the ratchet and uh, it should stop. Don't strip your drain bolts. Now we're ready to fill and I've got a couple more tips for you. Always be aware where your waste oil is. Uh, I've changed oil in cars for a long time and there have been instances where I've been in a rush and I've forgotten where I put my oil drain pan before I've put that in my big waste container. And it really sucks when you accidentally kick it and you spill oil all over your garage floor or worse, your dad's front driveway or even worse, and this one happened to my brother, uh, you have an incident where you spill it outside in a parking lot of an apartment complex where you're not allowed to change your own oil. Um, so always be mindful of where you put your uh, drain pan. Now when you're filling, uh, of course, you need to know how much you need to put in. And use a funnel. Don't try and manually pour it in. The funnel just makes it so much easier um, than trying to sit there and guide it delicately into the little hole. That's more of a, you know, I see people doing that on old cars all the time, just pouring it down the valve cover without a funnel, but I've never been good at it. Uh, have a paper towel nearby, because even if everything goes cleanly, uh, when you pull that funnel out, the new oil is gonna be running down the spout and it's gonna drip on anything that that thing hovers over. So just have a paper towel ready to wipe down the funnel and uh, if you get any oil anywhere. All right. Let's fill this thing up. All right, I filled it up. I have made a huge mess when I drained the waste oil into my waste oil pan. And uh, my last tech tip to you is do some do one solid for the environment. Get yourself a little uh, disposable oil can. Uh, you can get them at AutoZone. I think it was like ten bucks. You fill it up, you take it in, and they let you drain it, and it's reusable. And they take it and recycle the oil do that and everyone will be happy. So now I just need to put the fairing on, uh, run it a little bit, and it should not leak oil anymore. See you later.